Hello everyone, welcome to Plaisir's do-it-yourself flower channel. Today we're going to talk about flower arranging for a dinner table or lunch or brunch table for your guests. The whole aim of these videos is to uh, give you some ideas, some creative ways to do things yourself with your flowers but on a budget. We're a luxury florist in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, and uh, some of the creative things that we do uh, may not be in your reach as far as material, as far as um, possibilities, time, uh, etc. What a luxury florist can do may not always necessarily be um, uh, possible for someone at home. What we want to give back to the community that loves flowers is how you can do the same look and feel and the same uh, results by doing things a bit simpler and definitely on a budget. We have a few different ideas for a dinner table that would keep the cost down but also some things to really consider when you're setting a dinner table. Today I'm going to show you uh, three different options that uh, you can use for your um, guests and your beautiful dinner table. The first one is, uh, hello Mr. Chai. Mr. Chai, it's lovely that you're joining us, but our viewers are giving their time to us. So would it be possible for you to go to your bed? Thank you, Mama. Chai is the most beloved part of this boutique. We have customers that come just to see him. So he comes to work with me every single day. First thing I want to show you is uh, invest in a few bud vases. These are called single stem vases. You can put more than one stem if you wish. You can buy these from any um, uh, what, whatever you call them in your country, Looney store, dollar store, um, Mr. Cheap, <laughs> whatever they're called. In a variety of, of countries, they have different names. So they should be very inexpensive to line them up. Mr. Chai, can I move you, please? Thank you so much. Voila. So I like to use different shapes. Uh, but you can you can get uniform shapes if you like them all to look the same that's fine but I like to have them uh, just as a point of interest I like to have them different shapes always work uh, again you don't have to there are no rules but these are my little preferences I always work with uh, uneven numbers when it's for setup um, of, of decorations when it's for stems of flowers I always go uneven I just feel that it balances much nicer uh, on a table so here we have one two three four five six seven you can do five for the uh, purpose of this video I'm only going to use five because there's no room now place some candles you know these are IKEA candles super cheap super affordable and it'll make a huge difference at the end. What I do at home sometimes, um, I have the same uh, look, but I put it on a long cheese board. You can do it just like this, plain, in the middle of your table, but if you do have a long piece of wood, you can get that from your hardware store, or if you have a nice long cheese board you wanna use, you can do that so many different if you have a long tray you can use that whatever you have that's long enough to fit all of these in do that if your table requires only three of them then go for it do three five seven nine however long your table is you can do this with the flowers that i really like in this design is chamomile chamomile is extremely trendy it's very inexpensive and it just gives it a whimsical and happy uh, look. And I'll show you why it's economical because one stem will give you several stems for your uh, bud vases. One of the things I wanna talk to you about is the height of your flowers when you have dinner guests. Remember, when your dinner guests are seated, they have to be able to see each other across the table the eyes, eye level, so nothing should be obstructing that view. Here I am sitting, 
and if this flower was here, it would be super annoying and uncomfortable if I had to do this all the time to talk to the person across from me. So make sure that your flowers are not obstructing the eyes, all right? This is your guideline. Sit down and see if you can see the other person across the table easily. So cut them. You see, this is still one stem that I'm using. Now I'm into the second stem. Super happy, super young, super feminine. I think I would like one more stem. If they break like this, it's not a problem because you're gonna cut them short anyway. When you're doing your flower arrangements, remember to cut your stems at different heights. Not everything has to be just plunked in a vase in the same height. You're not gonna get the texture you want and you're not gonna get the look that you want. So up and down, some taller, some shorter, and you get the look. Voila, this is three stems only of chamomile flowers. That's it. Of course, uh, there's no room here for me to expand them, but it's always best to give them lots of room because once you light your candles, you don't want to create any kind of hazard. Yeah, so keep them away from the candle. You can go back and forth, one there, one here on a diagonal. Voila. Once you um, light your candles, and you have your beautiful chamomile bud vases on, your table will just look completely different. This look is really nice if you have something under it, if you can, it would prevent your table getting dirty if, uh, if your candles are dripping. So it's always a good idea to put something under it. This is your first option. Very pretty, very economical. You can do this with chamomile. You can do this with roses. You can do it with spray roses. Any flowers, you can do it with tulips. But again, keep it low. This is, again, eye level. You don't want to go higher than their chin. Yeah, Sit down and do the exercise when you're doing your first cutting. So that's one. The second style that you can arrange your uh, dinner table is if you want it to look really regal and grand, is to put tall flowers and tall vases, but be sure that when your guests want to sit down for dinner, you remove everything. Someone has to remove all the tall vases because again, you don't want their view to be obstructed. It's a really nice look to have when guests arrive, it looks really regal. Yes, Jay. To have tall flowers like this, and you have your you know table settings around, looks amazing. I'm gonna show you. There's some beautiful gladiolas. Again on a budget. I'm using flowers that are not expensive, all right? I would like to make a point of telling you this because I want to make sure that whatever you learn here, you can copy it at home. If you're a student and you're on a budget, if you are uh, a mom with a thousand other things to do, if you're a single guy that just wants to have a pretty table but you know you don't want to spend a lot of money, I am using flowers that would be inexpensive to purchase and fun to do. Uh, so here are some uh, purple gladiolas. Again, I like to work in uneven numbers, so you get three in each of those. We're going to put some beautiful allium ambassadors in the center, also three. And just to continue the theme in the other ones, I'm going to add one more allium to the gladiolas. Now, imagine this on a, a little bit further away from each other. You know, I wish the table was longer so I could show you. It's going to be very, very impressive. Regal, impressive, large, grand. It's going to be really nice. But the drawback is that it will obstruct everybody's view. You, they cannot talk to each other. Very annoying for guests. Remove them when you want them to be seated and when you want to serve 
um, dinner. The other positive about the flowers that I'm using today, not only uh, the cost is low, but they also don't have any scent. This is really important when you're serving dinner to guests. Two reasons. One, some guests wear cologne or perfume and they don't like your flowers to be overpowering and overshadowing their scent. That's the first thing. The second disadvantage for having scented flowers on the table is that it will overpower with the smell of your food. And some people are simply allergic to scents. So you want to always have your guest in mind. So these are the two options that uh, so far I've shown you. And the third option is to do a fishbowl. Again, I've chosen a fishbowl because it's low. Even if my flowers come up to this height, I still am not obstructing the view of my guests sitting across from one another. So let's do an arrangement in a low fish bowl. Again, these are super inexpensive to buy from your um, cheap store, from your dollar store, and I'll show you how to do next. Colors are very important when you're arranging your flowers uh, for your dinner table or your lunch or brunch table. Take a look at your plates and your serving dishes and whatever color they are, try not to make it too busy. For example, if you have all red color uh, china, well, I would just keep it low and go in with white. But if you have white and cream dishes, you could afford to give it a little bit of color. But today, for the sake of this exercise, let's go with, um, with all white and a little bit of peach. Hydrangeas are really, really nice in a fish bowl because they have the same uh, shape and the same uh, diameter as your fish bowl. Depending on the size of the mouth of your fish bowl, then you decide how many hydrangeas you're gonna have. I've used three here because these heads are quite big. When you put them together, they look like one big massive hydrangea. Peach roses are always nice. Remember to always clean the first petals of your rose because those are the protective petals. And when you're making a, a vase arrangement, remove all the leaves. Two three and I think I'm just going to do five because once again I like to work with uneven numbers of stems so I've got three hydrangeas and five roses now I know what you're going to say next three and five is eight and that's not uneven and you would be right <laughs> but each flower I like them to be uneven last one but then again i have to look at it at the end and see if it needs more or less so i like clustering roses together i think that gives it a little bit of more interest instead of having one 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 which is the traditional way but clustering is a european style it's a french style of uh, floristry that i like to that we like to follow so this one looks quite nice. Let me look at it from here. Honestly, I could use a couple of more roses just because I have them, but you don't have to. You can, uh, you can even have just three. Remove the leaves, tie them together. Now, try to tie them as high as possible as high up to the neck as possible so that you don't see it in your water. Uh, but if your tie is pretty, it doesn't matter if you see it or not. Mine is quite nice. It's that rustic um, brown tie, so I don't mind it if I see it. It's quite country style. Voila, so that's done. Now, how do you know where to cut? First of all, you need to adjust it. Even after you tie them together, sometimes you need to still bring your roses up and down. Some of them are quite low, so you can bring it up. Just be mindful that you don't break them, okay? Because you don't want your roses to be hidden. Then you hold the whole bouquet to the edge of your table, like that, and you say, yeah, this is pretty good. I'll cut it right here, boom. 
that gave me the measurement that I need to cut it. But again, it's not an exact science. Keep having to try it on and off. Yeah, this is too, too tall. We go shorter. That sits perfectly. So this arrangement will be a perfect size, perfect height. When I'm sitting and talking, it's not obstructing my view. The roses don't have scent. These particular roses that I've selected, they don't have scent. Some roses do have scent. Hydrangea doesn't have scent, so it's not gonna get mixed up with the smell of my food, or if anybody has an allergy, they're not gonna be bothered, etc. Et the most important thing about having guests is how you make them feel. When they leave your house, if they feel that they were respected, cared for, considered, and they felt important. Doesn't matter what food you serve, doesn't matter what flowers you put on the table, doesn't matter how expensive your china setting is, how you make them feel is the ultimate goal. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, leave some comments below, whatever else you want us to talk about, we'd be happy to do a video on, and please subscribe. See you next week, bye-bye.